led by House Oversight Committee member Ro Khanna, who promises, quote, once the dust settles here, I also plan to hold a hearing with the leaders responsible for this total meltdown. For more, we are happy to be joined by the aforementioned Congressman Ro Khanna, Democrat of California. And Congressman, uh, thank you very much for coming back on the broadcast. I guess I'd start this way. When members of Congress from Texas, you know who they are. They tend to be a vocal bunch. And politicians back home in Texas ask you, What's a liberal Democrat from the Bay Area in California doing, uh, heading a hearing on our problem in our state? What's your answer? Well, I'm a member of Congress for the United States, and the subcommittee I chair on the Environment and the Oversight Committee has jurisdiction over the United States. This is our responsibility, and one of the most outrageous uh, aspects of this crisis is politicians getting up there and lying to the American people that somehow this was caused by uh, renewable energy when the facts are so obvious that the failure was actually of the natural gas pipelines. Yes, there was some failure of wind, but wind is such a small percentage. Uh, Texas has been largely dependent on natural gas. They failed to weatherize. They had this problem in 2011. Uh, there were reports saying they needed to weatherize. They didn't make those investments. They've been selling the country on deregulation, and now we see the consequence. Sooner or later, we're going to realize that infrastructure uh, should be an enormous uh, uh, challenge, an enormous goal for our country. Are we calling it by the wrong word? There's nothing unsexier than infrastructure. As I always say, FDR had a different word for it. He called it jobs. Brian, that's uh, absolutely right. And it's actually one of the few places where we should be able to get bipartisan agreement. I mean, when you have that kind of public investment in jobs, you're absolutely right. That's what FDR said. Uh, you're creating opportunity for people in communities. You're building the foundation for economic growth. And you're protecting people from natural disasters like we just saw. So if there's ever a clarion call for having that kind of politics, it's now. Adam Sewer had a great piece in The Atlantic. And he said, look, the politics of cultural grievance can win you elections. But when you have real crises, like a power outage, like a pandemic, uh, politics of grievance d does not work. You actually need competence. You actually need vision. And that's the, the moment we're in. Congre Congressman, while you've done nothing to deserve this fate, please join us in listening to Ted Cruz on Hannity tonight. Okay. We will discuss on the other side. Texas has some of the lowest energy prices in the country. It's the cost of living is affordable. There's a reason people are fleeing the state of New York. There's a reason people are fleeing the state of California. The grid failed 4 million Texans. And so we need to have a serious examination about why that was, why the grid came short. But one of the major elements of that is actually the policy that Schumer is pushing for the whole country, which is the Green New Deal. Congressman, there's so much there. I don't think he wants to commission a new marketing slogan, Texas, come for the low cost of living, stay for the cold and dark. I do think he might be alleging that Chuck Schumer somehow turned out the lights. What do you make of that? You know what's sad, Brian? The governor of California, my home state, Gavin Newsom, he didn't take a shot at Texas. He said, let's do everything that we can do to help our fellow Americans. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, she didn't take a shot at Texas. She said, let's do everything we can to help. Here we have people in California and New York saying, people in Texas are our fellow citizens. Let's put their needs first. I don't understand why Ted Cruz at this moment is politicizing it. It's almost like he doesn't believe we're the United States of America. If someone is hurting in Texas, it's as much a concern to me as an American uh, as if they were hurting in any other state. And it's so divisive at this time. Well, who is buying the argument that this is somehow connected to the Green New Deal? You correctly pointed out AOC has raised $5 million for people in a state other than hers. It was just such a lie. I mean, the reality is that this was clear, the cause. They didn't invest in the weatherization. They didn't anticipate that there would be this kind of winter. It'd be understandable if it was the first time, but 10 years ago, they had reports telling them to make these investments. And it actually is easier, if anything, to weatherize uh, wind and to weatherize renewable energy than it is to weatherize natural plants. So if anything, this should be an argument for having more 
renewable energy. And those are the facts that need to come out. But one of the things we need to explore is this disinformation campaign. I mean, it's disinformation, not just about elections, but disinformation about the climate, disinformation about renewable energy. And it's an epistemic crisis in our democracy that's being fueled by social media and certain cable news and really preventing good policy. Congressman, thank you so much for coming on. Democrat of the Bay Area and the great state of California, Congressman Ro Khanna has been our guest tonight. Thank you. Appreciate you taking our questions.